Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Fortune. I'm a certified professional makeup artist. And if you are interested in having me paint your face or simply working with me, then do be sure to check down below in the description. I leave my email address where you can contact me and we can chit chat makeup. We are gonna be talking about all the things that I think you do not need. How you can save your money and get the most out of your dollar. Make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and also click that bell button next to it. This way you get a notification every time I'm uploading a new video here on my channel. The first product that I think is totally unnecessary in everyone's beauty collection is a primer. Skincare, in my opinion, is always the best step prior to going in with makeup. So this is the combination I've been using that I love. It looks beautiful under makeup. I'm going in with the Maraud Resurgence Rapid Collagen Infusion Serum. One full pump of that, and I'm just going to spread this all over my face. And then bringing what's ever left over down my neck. Maraud Perfecting Day Cream. I'm gonna take a decent amount, rub it between my fingers, and apply that to my face. And not only is this gonna grip onto the makeup, but it's also gonna keep my skin protected from the sun. Oh, I just, I love this stuff so much. The next thing that I don't think you need is foundation. Just get a really good concealer that you can literally use all of your face. You can shear it out and customize it by mixing it in with some eye cream, with some moisturizer, some face moisturizer, and kind of make it more of like a sheerer foundation. I'm going to be using this concealer. This is the Julep Cushion Complexion 5-in-1 Skin Perfecting with turmeric. Make sure that you are using a concealer that is close to your skin tone. Don't use a brightening concealer all over your face because it's gonna look like you're wearing a mask. Pick a concealer that is close enough to your skin tone. This is in the shade 230 Beige, and I'm just gonna take it in the center of my face because that is where I have the most discoloration, so I like to work from the center of my face out. Padding kind of presses the coverage in and kind of creates more coverage, whereas swiping, if you think about the action of swiping, that kind of shears it out. So I'm padding where I put this first because I said, you know, I need a little bit more coverage in the center of my face. I am gonna go ahead and use a lighter concealer underneath my eyes because that's the vibe that I'm going for. However, you can literally take this concealer and just put it underneath your eyes and voila, you are done. I'm just gonna take my Makeup Forever Ultra HD concealer and I'm gonna put this underneath my eyes but let's just pretend that I'm using the same concealer and that I'm being the minimalist right now um, that I am aspiring to be in this video. If I had the shade that matches my face a little bit better in this product, I would have just used this all over the face. I definitely think you need blush, so I'm gonna use my Honest Beauty in the shade Peony Pink. I love this kind of brush to apply any kind of blush, whether it's cream or powder. I think you're totally able to just take a bronzer and use it to contour your face and bronze your face. Trusty NARS Laguna. I just think this is a beautiful shade for bronzing for someone with my complexion and contouring. When you think about contour, you think of precise placement. Contour, you hug it really tight in the back. You don't put contour like all over your face, okay? So using a tighter, more dense brush like this with a bronzer is really gonna give you that kind of contour illusion. Morphe M523. I'm gonna pick up my bronzer on the tip of that brush and I'm gonna hug this in the back of my face. See that line right there? And I'm putting it right underneath my cheekbone and I'm patting it out, I'm not swiping it because I wanna blend it, but I don't wanna swipe it because swiping it is gonna make this product fluff a little bit too much and we don't wanna fluff it. You know, contour again is all about precision. Right in my hairline, just right here, and I'm doing that same pressing motion, pressing it into the skin. Can you see that little shadow right there? Contour is about creating that natural looking shadow so that your face looks a little bit more chiseled. And I'm keeping it in like a two inch space. This side of my face like holds more pigment than this side of my face. So I don't, it's very strange. Anyone else experience that? Put a little shadow there. This way we're getting rid of our double chin. Bronzer is all about a very soft kind of blown out glow. So using a bigger brush, pat it really gently into the bronzer, tap off the excess, and I'm gonna start underneath my chin 
and kind of just contour but also bronze like it's gonna help to enforce a shadow underneath but it's gonna make us look a little bit more sun-kissed forehead and see i'm not putting this directly into the hairline i'm patting this more all over the face to just give a bronzed look. Can you see that I'm a little bit more bronzed on this side than I am on this side? And I like to take what's ever left on my brush and run it down my nose, put a little bit more down here. Okay, so can you see the precision of the contour right here? But then overall, our face has a glow now because of the bronzer. Let's move on to brow products. Now, this category is a little bit complex, but just bear with me and just follow me step by step. So I don't think that you necessarily need a product that is labeled specifically for brows. You can literally take a neutral brown eyeshadow using an angled brush and just fill in your brows that way. I've done that so many times here on my channel. If you don't want to use an eyeshadow to go ahead and fill in your brows, traditional brow pencil. This is my favorite one. This is the Joa Precision Brow Pencil in the shade Brunette. It has a really small applicator so you can get in there and draw very natural looking hair like strokes. You really don't need a brow gel. And one thing that you can do that I used to do all the time when I couldn't, you know, afford a brow gel because it just didn't make sense for me to spend my money on it. I would literally take a spoolie. You can buy these on Amazon. They come in packages of a hundred for like a few bucks. Take a spoolie, spray it with hairspray, run it over your brow like that. It's gonna lock in that eyeshadow that you use to fill in your brows or that brow pencil that you use to fill in your brows. And it's also going to keep your brow hairs in place all day long. So if you just want to go ahead and use a tinted brow gel to fill in your brows, you need to have a specific kind of brow, okay? I by no means have perfect brows, but I have fuller brows. I have hairs in my brow that will grip onto the fibers of this, which will tint my brows and make them look more fuller. I use two shades because I like to give my brows a little bit more dimension. I think it makes them look a little bit natural. So I'm going to go in with the darker one first, which is brownie brows. So I'm taking this and I'm brushing the hairs up. And can you see that my hairs are gripping onto that tint and looking a little bit fuller? Like it's not perfect, but I don't need my brows to look perfect. I just need them to look a little bit more filled in than they are. And then when there's less product on the wand, I go and I fill in the front and I brush the front up. And then I'll go through it one more time. Can you see that this brow is just beautifully filled in? It's not too perfect, but it's not overly done. It looks really, really natural. And this is just using the darker shade. I'm gonna go ahead and take the lighter shade. This is in the shade Soft Brownie Brows and I'm using a really light hand. And I feel like that just looks so much more natural than when you just go in with the dark one, but you guys don't need to be as high maintenance as me. You can literally just go in with whichever brow gel matches your brow. You can just really see the difference and it looks really good and it looks really natural and it took two freaking seconds. This hurts me to even say it because I love eyeshadow, but I don't think that you need an eyeshadow either. If you are more of a natural kind of lady, you know, your face but better kind of makeup look, then you can literally just use bronzer in your crease and call it a day. You can also use blush in your crease and call it a day. Elf C brush. I'm gonna dip it into my cream blush and I'm just gonna put this all over the lid. I love putting blush and bronzer on my lids because it just kind of ties in the makeup look. It makes it look really, really cohesive. And that looks really pretty. You can literally just put some mascara on and call it a day. And I'm just gonna run it underneath my lower lash line. I'm gonna go ahead and take a blending brush. This is a Sephora 19. It's kind of like a tapered blending brush. I'm gonna pick up some of my bronzer and I'm just gonna run that through the crease. And I'm gonna run it underneath my eye as well. And this is really gonna tame down the pink and it's gonna create a little bit more dimension. And again, I'm just using my bronzer to do that. And then if you wanna give like a more feline seductive effect, pick up a little bit more bronzer, poke that into the outer corner. That's gonna create a little bit more of a shadow here to help elongate your eyes. All right, girl, we definitely need some powder. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take any of the creases that formed underneath my eye out. Ciate London Pressed Watermelon 
powder. I'm just gonna pat that underneath the eye. Definitely need a powder. Powder, you know, I don't think you can get away without a powder, honestly. I'm just gonna powder the center of my face, just where I don't like to get oily. Literally just noticed that I did all of that and I didn't hit record on my microphone. So apologies that the audio was a little bit off, but we gotta roll with the punches. There's only so much time in a day that I have to film. So apologies, but the rest of the video will be of higher quality, I promise. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and curl my lashes. Do I think that you absolutely need to curl your lashes? No, one could say that this is overrated. But if you are someone that has really, really straight lashes, okay, and they do not hold a curl, I definitely recommend using an eyelash curler like this. The Tweezer Man ones are amazing, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like some days I'm too lazy and I'll just throw mascara on and it looks fine. So I don't think that you need an eyelash curler, but you know, sometimes we like things that we don't need. I think you need a mascara though. So I'm gonna use the um, Lancome Lash Idol. Like, look at that mascara. You stop it. You stop it right now. The whole um, audio thing threw me off and I totally forgot about eyeliner. But my lashes are drying, so let's move on to the lips and then we'll come back to the eyes. <sighs> okay, let me just take a breath. This pains me because I am a lip product fanatic. And if I was stranded on a desert island and y'all told me I could only bring one lip product, it would be a lip liner. Just because I think that lip liners are so versatile, I could live without a lipstick because a lipstick is beautiful to just swipe on a shade one, two, three and go. But you can swipe on a shade with lip liner. It'll just take a little bit longer. And the difference between just using a lip liner and using just a lipstick is that you will never get the precision of a lip liner with a lipstick. Lip liner has a very different formula than lipstick. Lip liner tends to be a little bit waxier, used to help lay down a barrier so that the more emollient formulation of a lipstick doesn't move through the fine lines of your lips and distort the lip shape that you created with your lip liner. So I always think that a lip liner is a must. I'm gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat in the shade Iconic Nude. I'm gonna show you guys how to fill in your lips and kind of make it look like you're not only wearing a lip liner, but you're wearing a lipstick as well. And I don't know if you can see, but I'm kind of leaving the center, the pouty section of my lips alone, because this is gonna to help to create an illusion that we are wearing more than one lip product. Do I think that you need a lip gloss? No, no, I don't think that you need a lip gloss, okay? I think that you can use a chapstick to achieve the same kind of look. I'm gonna use the Burt's Bees. This is the Cucumber Mint. This is my favorite Burt's Bees. Uh, flavor, but it's not a flavor, scent, I should say. You also wanna kind of melt this down a little bit because if you think about it, chapstick is thicker than gloss. So you wanna use the warmth of your body to go ahead and just kind of thin it out. So I'm literally taking it and putting it on the back of my hand like that. Let it like sit there for a good 10 seconds. Take it with my finger, just like that. And I'm gonna pat it in the center of my lip just where I didn't fill my lips in with that lip liner. And I'm patting it, I'm not rubbing it, because I don't wanna move the lip liner that I applied on the outline of my lip. And then as always, if you feel like you took a little bit away from the outline, you can go back in with the liner and just help to reinforce whatever would have smudged or you accidentally took away. And voila, we literally look like we're wearing lip liner, a lipstick, and a gloss, but we only used a lip liner and a chapstick. It's all about versatility, it's all about placement, and it's all about just playing with the formulation to just make it work for you. Can you tell the difference between my two eyes? Off camera, I went ahead and applied some liner, however, it is not liner, because the next product that I think you do not need is gel eyeliner. I also don't think that you need a liquid eyeliner. I did upload a video, it was a Fast Fix Friday, where I showed you guys how to go ahead and take a eyeshadow and turn it into a liquid 
liner using a mixing medium. I think that is one of the greatest tips I've ever learned as a makeup artist. You're going to save a ton of money and you're going to go ahead and just be able to flex your makeup creativity to a whole other level. So I'll put that video up here as well as down below if you would like to check it out. But today I'm showing you in this video how to get away with using an eyeshadow as a gel liner. I'm going to grab an angled brush. You don't need this one. You just need any kind of angled brush. But this is the Scott Barnes 59 and I'm going to grab an eyeshadow palette. Today I'm using the Huda Beauty Mauve Obsessions because I don't know why this just like dark plummy purple is speaking to me. Plop in here and then push this into the lash line. I'm just stamping this into the lash line. If you are working with an eyeshadow palette that is not as pigmented as this Huda Beauty one, just take a setting mist or just take a spray bottle, put some water in it, just anything that's going to gently mist your brush because this dampness is gonna go ahead and pick up more eyeshadow and make this eyeliner more pigmented. So just watch. I'm going to take the angledness of this and I'm just going to look ahead in my mirror, stamp a little wing on like that. If you make a mistake, it's just powder. So it's so much easier to clean up than a liquid liner or a gel liner. If you want to go ahead and clean it up, I would just take a different angled brush that is clean with nothing on it and just like run it underneath just to make that wing a little bit sharper. Last but not least, I think a setting mist is essential. Listen to me, if you have oily skin, I think that a long lasting setting mist will really take your makeup far, really get you to that 12 hour stretch. So I would definitely recommend the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray or something to that effect, any type of skin. Like kind of just dampening this makes any powder that you put on your face really melt into your skin and make it look more natural than Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. One last product that I forgot to mention that I do not think you need to spend your money on ever is a highlighter. Just look at this. Like, I don't even think I need to say anything. Just look at my cheekbone. It is dewy. We are dewy. We are delicious. And that is simply because I used really good skincare as a primer. I think that that first and foremost is the best way to go about it. And also like I didn't powder this area of my face at all. Those are all of my products that I truly believe you do not need to spend a penny on in order to get a full face makeup routine. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, do be sure to leave it a big thumbs up down below. Let me know down below if there are any other beauty products that I didn't mention in today's video that you personally live without. I would love to hear any kind of innovations, what you use instead, leave it down below. I would love to read it and I'm sure my other viewers would love to read it as well. Make sure that you subscribe and click that bell before you leave. I had a wonderful time as always. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And until the next time, I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, whenever it is you are watching this and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Mwah.